We're not quite sure when, but once upon a time, on a planet that looks a lot like this, entertainment was born. Born from people's desire to share, laugh, and be happy. Twelve years after Thomas Edison's The Great Train Robbery, the world witnessed the first talking radio broadcast transmitted to the general public, from New York City to San Francisco and from Virginia, USA to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Sometime later in 1927, the first talking movie, The Jazz Singer, would be released. Then in the 1930s, television was brought into our lounge rooms, first in the United Kingdom, then in the USA, and then to almost every corner of the world. By the 1980s, the computer age was upon us, and by the 90s, the use of computers and the internet was becoming a way of life. However, in February 2005, the way of life on computers and the internet was about to change the world. Three former PayPal employees, Joy Karim, Stephen Chen and Chad Hurley, registered the company YouTube LLC and the domain YouTube.com. Their site was a place for sharing videos, entertainment, educating, engaging others and to broadcast yourself. A place for communication and interaction with people. And that's where our story really starts, with people. The people who watch, interact and make videos on YouTube. They call themselves the YouTubers and this is their story. YouTube is a video based uh, form towns the way that people live here. The few shows that I'm really getting into. Right now. Monday to me is a Monday to my viewer. Uh, to bring them everywhere she wants to a beach and I suppose it doesn't have a beach. No, I don't believe that. I just want to do the trivia. Potentially, you may meet people who even recognize you. Alright, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. The um, cool thing about these guys is, they, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. And that's, that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. In April 2005, the first video on YouTube became available. It was called Me at the Zoo, and not coincidentally, it was YouTube's co-founder Joy Karim in front of the camera. But what did this video really symbolize for the future? Who would watch and upload videos, and what is YouTube? Hello, D.R. Ragsdale, Raggy Ragsdale channel, and Uncle Raggy is back to say, what is YouTube? YouTube is an invitational paradise. It is an invitation to you to put yourself on the tube like the TV. Only people can invite you into their homes who want you to come in. And if they love you, then you stay together until they finish. If they don't, they uninvite you simply by clicking. What a great opportunity is that. How many times do we wish we could have clicked somebody out of our house? Well, I think part of the reason I started on YouTube is because I could. And that, I think, is quite a major part of YouTube. Because I can. It's a website of opinions and community and interests. And people make videos about their interests, or they make videos about their lives, or something that's interesting. And I think YouTube, in the most basic terms, is a video sharing site for people, for real people in the real world. YouTube has been a media where I can get my own opinion out there, where I can do my little part to change the world to a better place. Because it's a form of communication, really. It's a way to express yourself in unique in unlimited ways. You can do whatever you like, as long as you're not showing any boob or knob. 
when I first started on YouTube, I thought YouTube was a place to uh, sell yourself in a way, to get yourself out there, let people see what you do. Uh, and I didn't realise until I got on here how many different arts that were on here and what else was on here. I mean, there's everything on YouTube, just about everything you want to know you can find on YouTube somewhere from the past. A lot of people have a lot of really intelligent stuff to say. I envy those people. <laughs> YouTube is a place where you can say, scare me, frighten me, thrill me, amaze me, make me laugh, giggle, make me cry, make me sad, infuriate me, make me angry, make me look at myself. Good day everyone, I'm Roger Online. The best thing about YouTube is the quality. We're all just ordinary people here, but look at us, we're making really good videos, good camera work, great editing. That's what I love about YouTube, the quality. Chad Hurley had come from a creative and programming background before YouTube and had been taken care of, among other things, the design of the site. Hurley had designed PayPal's logo before his YouTube career and brought valuable skills to the operation. Stephen Chen and Joyd Karim were both technically savvy and oversaw the bandwidth and storage logistics of the site. Expenses were high in these early days and Chen was using credit cards to cover the costs. YouTube had been running in beta testing mode throughout the year until in late 2005 it received over three million US dollars in funding from Sequoia Capital and the site was officially launched. I can watch them sing and dance, pull rabbits out of hats. I love the crazy dogs and the fuzzy kitty cats. Anything in the world I want to see is on YouTube. I can listen to the rain, surf the waves, ski the snow, tell it when to stop. Tell it when to go, it's YouTube. In early 2006, YouTube had grown in popularity through the use of its video embedding capabilities on Facebook, MySpace, and live journal pages. Pre existing communities from Yahoo chat groups, Blogger, WordPress, and elsewhere had begun to migrate to the new video sharing site in massive numbers. In April of 2006, YouTube received funding again from Sequoia Capital, this time for $8 million, which allowed the founders to not only secure the future of their site, but also to move from Garage to an office based in San Mato, California. Twenty new employees were hired to progress YouTube's social and technical capabilities, but it was also at this time that Karim decided to leave the company in the hands of his co-founders Chen and Hurley. Tubers at this time were accustomed to slight features like groups, which was bringing people of similar interest together, making gaining an audience and becoming popular on the tubes a real possibility. But for the digital dinosaurs of those early days, it was uncharted territory. It's a long time ago, folks. Long time ago. Uh, the early years of YouTube, as far as I'm concerned, were very fun-filled. There were less restrictions on the actual uploaders. Things seemed to be a little bit more fairer then. Everybody was on more of a level playing field. It started out with YouTubers who are now famous. A lot of things changed in the last six years. When I started, it was just a beautiful community with a lot of YouTubers helping each other. Talking back in 2006, 2007, uh, now I remember that Google didn't own YouTube at this point, and there was no such thing as ads or ads revenue for anyone. YouTube then and now, man, give me the den. Give it back. I want it back. Uh, I remember the rating systems was up to five stars instead of thumbs up or thumbs down. There was no limit to the amount of channels you could subscribe to. And you could add as many people as you wanted on your friends list. We got the little things, the banners, you know, on the side with uh, uh, what rewards, awards, uh, you know, most viewed, uh, most discussed. 
the early days of YouTube are gone. God, how many, you know, how many people are still around? How many are gone and, and where some of them at? You know, you wonder where they're at. See, back then I just had my knee replaced, so I was stuck to the confines of my own home. Couldn't really do much. Would I say I miss the old community? Yes, but also I make a living working on YouTube. So I wouldn't really change anything, I guess. I just love the product. The first time I, I saw it and met the people behind the product, the engineering staff, you know, the management, all great people, love the people. Took the job, the HR manager at the time, we had no money, he was writing, writing on his personal uh, checking account. Wrote me a personal check for the flight that I flew down to San Francisco, wrote me a personal check. I called my wife and it was like, I'm gonna go work for YouTube. In July 2006 alone, YouTube was receiving 100 million video views per day. With 65,000 new video uploads per day, new tubers were finding the site every minute, each with their own story on how they came to the domain. I've been on YouTube about 2006 slash 2007. Uh, back in about 2006, I was actually looking for something to do, something to watch. It was about six years ago, I was watching TV, and they're talking about this new website called YouTube where people would post videos. So I thought, oh, okay, this is pretty exciting. So after reading a story in a newspaper back in 2006, the story was about two big uh, YouTube channels at that time, which were Lonely Girl 15 and Ask a Ninja. And this was at the time of uh, Lonely Girl 15. I just remember seeing some funny videos at the time and I was quite hooked onto the site and then I just kept watching videos after that. I was basically looking for music videos and wrestling related videos. So finally my curiosity got the best of me. I went to YouTube to see what it was all about. I just couldn't get into Lonely Girl 15 but Ask a Ninja was like nothing I had ever seen before. Well, I actually have no memory of how I actually found YouTube. I must have read about it. Well, I first found out about YouTube in 2006, and at school. I do know that I came to YouTube to watch South Park videos. I just wanted something different from the other social networks, and I found YouTube. And I found a lot of very useful resources in YouTube. That's really how I was using it. Almost like a kind of visual Wikipedia. I was like, wow. It looks like where you can actually broadcast. I've met some foot fetish people, so I did some feet videos. So I would watch their videos and think, wow, I could do like a ten times better job than them. And if they can do these videos and upload it, well then why the hell wouldn't I do it? And he said, I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. I said, what? What's that? You got a YouTube channel? And I said, wow, how do you do that? I would like to know what that's all about. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what, you edit my video or show me how to edit the videos I'm doing and I will teach you how to upload and start your own channel on YouTube. And I said, sounds like a fair trade, sure. He designed my background for me and encouraged me to start making videos. Once I started posting some of the videos that I was making, I was actually very excited on how many views I was getting and how many people actually commented. I checked out YouTube and I was looking at these videos and there were 100, 200,000 views. And I go, this is great. I didn't realize that you would upload something to YouTube and nobody would watch it. I get 12 people watching a video of me doing something and I thought this is ridiculous I would do it you know I don't mind a thousand views when I was bitching about getting a thousand views per video that's okay you know I mean uh, Renetto's down to that <laughs> so anyway stumbling through these videos I find that there's actually vloggers now at that time I'm like what the hell is a vlog <laughs> I didn't even know what vlogging was at the time so i had done a search on vlogs and found all these people from all over the world that done video blogs. So expanding my horizons, I go through and find out exactly what a vlog is. And I'm like, wow, you know, these guys are doing it, I can do it. You know, they're talking about the kind of crap that I could talk about. <laughs> On YouTube, vlogging was the next step in the evolution of blogging. 
YouTubers like Z Frank would innovate a commercial, fast-talking, jump-cut style vlog, while an unrehearsed, unedited freestyle vlog would be a more common means of communication for the everyday tuber. Despite the differences in vlogging styles, anyone with access to a video camera and the internet could participate. Am I a vlogger on YouTube? Yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am a vlogger, a video vlogger. Vlog, vlog, vlog. I never knew if that was vlog or vlog. I'm so old and stupid I don't know. Vlogging is basically like video logging. It's like blogging but with videos. Now the groovy thing about vloggers as opposed to other entertainment on the channel is that we tell it like it is. It's more than you would get to see if I was just blogging with text. A lot more because you, you, you see my expression, you see my attitude towards the subject I'm talking about. Let's face it, if it's monotone, like this, or talk about my life like this, people will think it's really boring. So I like to animate my face. I'm vlogging in the rain. <laughs> I might check up my yearly physical, make sure there's nothing too wrong with me. Not that I think there's something wrong with everyone. There are some people that just want you to sit in on their lives. And they're not that interesting, to be honest, some of them. Some of them are boring as crap. You think you're that important? You're not. You're just an ordinary person who's going shopping. You don't have to have people watching you for that. A good vlogger shares it all. Some people make vlogs every day. In my opinion, you got to be really tough and very brave to be a video vlogger. Because you put yourself out there emotionally. And that can be extremely scary for some people knowing that everyone's a critic. Depending on how good the vlog is, like you have to be energetic, keep on point or so forth. And if you're not, then technically it's a bad vlog or you can't be able to do videos properly, te technically. I'm not sure that I could do a daily vlog. Most because I don't think my life is interesting enough that people would want to watch or listen to the same thing day in, day out. Every day, every day, lots of stuff. By the way, yeah, I should remember to look there and not narcissistically at yourself like all the other vloggers. I'm glad I got onto YouTube while I'm a responsible adult and not when I was much younger, not while I was still at school. Um, or I may have gotten myself in quite a bit of strife. Your, your YouTube channel is your YouTube channel to run it the way you want to. Now, I do object to some vloggers, especially those like Shay Carl, who, I don't know, for some reason I get the idea in my mind that their whole life is a reality show based around YouTube. And obviously them kids are not really, I think, are getting the chance to actually grow up in a real world. I don't understand why Shay Tard is quite so big. He's not that interesting. He just shouts a lot and is a bit mean to his kids. YouTube can be very dangerous. I totally avoid negative video bloggers like the plague. I don't enjoy negativity at all. Carry on doing what you're doing. It's fun to just talk out loud to a camera because no one else is talking to you. <gasps> oh, so bitchy. See, you don't have to be human to be on YouTube. You can be a hand puppet, a hand puppet. They're wonderful, they're wonderful. So give me a hug, come on, give me a hug. Oh. From its beginnings, YouTube has always aimed to make uploading and video sharing quick and easy. The process of uploading videos to YouTube has hardly changed since it started. And for the tubers of today, uploading has become second nature. Hi everybody, Jevadon here. Today I just wanted to talk about posting a video on YouTube. If you have been brave enough to make videos, you love to make videos or you have them on your computer and you've never done anything with the video you can join the YouTube community and you can upload your videos there for the whole world to see YouTube has provided this nice little upload button you just click that upload button then right down here it says select files from your computer why yes because I have them stored there just click on the button 
-hmm. it will do it. It's sort of easy. It's very easy. Posting the video on the YouTubes is quite simple. First you need a camera. You take a digital camera. You could use this one. I'm not using that at the moment. I was too lazy. You could use a not so great integrated webcam such as the one you're viewing me on. You gonna open the file, open it, and it will start to upload. It's very, very simple. But odd when it takes a long time to post. It's hit a wall again. It's, it's got a problem, technical problem. Yeah, that's not correct. It should never be a thousand minutes ever. Unless you're uploading like a thousand hours. The good thing is, posting videos is awesome. I mean, you get contact to other people. I've never really had like close, intimate relationships on YouTube. Psychology, posting a video. I mean, why does anyone post a video at all? It's not all about money. Well, 90% of it is money. I was checking out the different lighting, lightings and angles. It's nice, isn't it? You can do all kinds of... Yeah, just a, just a little 360. Uh, jeez, that's fucking blocky. If you don't have an account already, make one. Think of an awesome name. Also, uh, a lot of people don't put in a description. The description is quite important. You really should put in a little description of what the video content is about. You can also put links to your other YouTube channels and stuff in that section. And tags are very, very important too. Uh, this is just taking too long, you know, even just copy pasting tag. Well, I have to do that though, don't I? At least a, a basic name and date and all that shit. But, you know, keywords are going to take forever. It's just, uh, it's just taking too long. Often, you know, I'll record a video and uh, I'll think, no, I, I don't want to post that. It just makes me look stupid if I put this out in public. But then I think, eh, yeah, I'll post it. Why not? And then, um, yeah, it makes me look stupid. Look, if you are a musician out there and you haven't posted any videos on YouTube, I, th I think it's a fantastic platform to work off of and you ought to give it a go. Um, through YouTube, um, I definitely feel that I've got some good opportunities. good bands, network and create gigs and shows for, uh, for people. If I had to offer any advice to anyone who was you know, younger than me, you know, I'd probably say, be yourself, you know, that's the main thing, but keep it real, you know, because I personally, you know, I've had almost a million views, you know, me, so if I can have, you know, a million views, you can too, you know, so I hope to be, you know, real inspiration to the younger people out there because you know I feel as though they need someone to look up to in these times of turmoil and you know if I can offer something back to the community I really feel like I'm a real success there. Every second people from all over the world are joining the YouTube community. It's a community that is hard to define because it encompasses YouTubers localized in 53 different countries, speaking 61 different languages, making YouTube the home of the biggest online community anywhere. I love the YouTube community, the people I have met on this amazing medium. I, I would not trade for anything I can imagine. We have an awesome community of very supportive Cheapest. Never listen to anyone who says there's no community on YouTube. I've learned for sure that it definitely is a community. The YouTube community is huge. It's a small community that sticks together like this. And I've met a few good friends out there. I've really made some really good friends. I have quit watching TV. I have given up a lot of the pastimes that I used to waste a lot of time on. Because of the YouTube community, I watch everything. The whole world is my community because of YouTube. 
somehow you sort of get to know these people through the videos and when you meet them they're not much different. Cyber community. Get to see people from all over the world, other parts of the country, and if you're lucky, you can get to meet some of those people in person. Or if you're unlucky. <laughs> You'll always see different uh, facets of you know, society on YouTube, and they'll get together and make their own little YouTube communities. You won't see that with puppet channels. <laughs> if it happens, it's very rare, and they're very small communities. Because uh, for the most part, puppet channels don't like other puppet channels. And nobody ever talks about that, but it's true. Arguably, one of the site's most interactive features is its comment facility. Commenting on YouTube happens constantly and allows YouTubers the ability to communicate not just with other video viewers, but also directly with content creators. YouTube comments are the cherry at the bottom of YouTube. There you can find brilliance. You can find sheer ignorance that will drive you insane. You can find cutting edge wit that will impress you, leave you on the floor, rothly. So here we go, I'll leave the comments. WTF question mark OMG exclamation. And then my signature smiley face is eyeballs and a small bee for a squiggly tongue. So when I'm saying lol on, on my comments, I genuinely mean it. It's one of the things that makes us a community, you know, uh, the fact that we communicate with each other. Because you catch young people and you say to them, listen, no matter what anyone else might say, you've got talent, you've got ability. I see it. I appreciate it. And if you work on it, you're going to become so much greater. We can voice our opinions about their video. It lets me know that people I either like what I do or don't. I have never written a comment to tell someone that I didn't enjoy it. Because if I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to comment. They don't need to see that. In fact, sometimes it can be the most entertaining is uh, watching people fight in the comments. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. That's why I opened an account, was, was to comment. I like to use the exclamation mark a lot. I don't comment on every video I watch. Maybe I should just say, hey, how's it going? I, I do normally comment on almost every video I watch. I comment on about 90% of the videos I watch. And of course you can disable comments or even uh, just set it to apply, uh, approval so you can approve comments and all that. Hate comments and stuff I never allow on my channel. I always, you know, delete them and block them. It's that simple. I, you know, I will not allow somebody to promote hatred on my channels. I myself fight in the comments. I hate it when people put low and they're not really low. What's the point, you know, what's the point in that? You know, what makes YouTube superior to then the old-fashioned television is that only crazy people could sit there, well, only crazy people would sit there and talk back to their television. But on YouTube, by allowing comments, you're able to talk back to the video. Now, you could do a response video, but sometimes just a, a comment is all that's necessary. YouTube's first comment came from the YouTuber Cobalt Grove. The comment was on Joyd's Me at the Zoo video and was simply the word interesting. In October 2006, YouTube was to be changed forever after the sale of the site to the search engine leader Google at the price of $1.65 in stock. Stephen Chen and Chad Hurley were to remain in their positions at YouTube with its new owners overseeing the business. This major change in the YouTube matrix would eventually cause unrest amongst the YouTube communities. The worst thing about YouTube is Google, the commercialization. At first, people weren't doing this to make money. They were just doing this to be heard, to be seen, to have a voice. YouTube is no longer you. It's corporation too. The demographic on YouTube has changed dramatically. YouTube has changed dramatically. YouTube uh, is a huge business now, and it, you know a lot of companies work with YouTubers, and it's uh, it's becoming this machine that you have to feed constantly with your content. 
I think it's becoming more about um, profits, uh, corporations. The overtime change and the commercialization of YouTube, you know, from the creators selling it to Google. As time went by, the commercialization took over the front page of YouTube. The little guys brought down to a point where they're very difficult to find. You can only watch so many Shaytard videos. You can only watch Ray William Johnson steal so many videos that you feel empty watching that stuff. I, I have a First Amendment right to complain. Well, sure you do. But it's falling upon deaf ears because YouTube a.k.a. Google gives people what they want. Let me say that again. YouTube, a.k.a. Google, gives people what they want. Google and YouTube are a multi-billion dollar company making billions of dollars of profit every year. They know what the hell people want. This is insanity. This was supposed to be where everybody had a chance. YouTube are actually removing the community feel of YouTube uh, away. There was a big fish in a small pond when YouTube first started. Now it's a very big pond and I am a very small fish. The heart and soul of what made it great has been made a lot more difficult to find all in the name of the mighty dollar. The worst thing about YouTube is the proportion of videos to ads is all wrong. I come to this place, YouTube, to look at ads. And of course, look, I realize we've got to have the videos. That's fine, that's, that's good. But so many of them, they're just dominating the whole scene. Really, I, I would prefer it if we simply got rid of the videos and just had the ads. In 2007, YouTube launched its partner program, allowing selected YouTubers to earn revenue from their videos. Also at this time, it was not unusual to see popular videos receiving close to one million views. The phenomenon was called viral, but even for the talented YouTuber, going viral was not an easy task. Some YouTubers would spend their days striving for a viral video, while for others, it would just happen. Oh my god, it's full on! Double rainbow all the way across the sky! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What does this mean? Oh! Oh my god! Rainbows have co been coming to me with ever increasing frequency. And when I said, what does it mean, I'm questioning why these rainbows are coming to me. You know, what, what does it mean that the rainbows are coming to me all the time? And then this one right here looks like a giant eye. You know, and, and I, I figured only God could have an eye that big. So I, I recognized that I was in the presence of God. Oh! Oh, God, it's so bright. Oh, my God, it's so bright and vivid. Oh, oh, oh. I want people to realize that that's the only viral video with no people in it, with no ads on it. And, um,. I want people to realize that this is the first time in history that someone recognized God and put it on YouTube for everyone to see. And that's why this whole thing has happened. <sighs> oh. <sighs> oh my God. Where the food is bigger, well, I had this uh, cooking video on how to separate the egg white from yolk, 
and I uploaded it three months ago and it got like 9,000 views. G'day guys, it's Greg here. Well today on Greg's Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to separate your egg yolk from your egg white. Now this is really easy to do, yet people try to complicate it. So let me show you the easy way to do it. Let's go. And then suddenly I was sitting at home and I was just checking my emails and there was like 150 new emails come through for comments on that video. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I went in and I looked at it. So what you're gonna need is an egg. I laid this one earlier. And a plastic soft drink bottle, just like this one. The first thing I'm gonna do is crack this egg. Just onto a plate like that. Now all you need to do is get your soft drink bottle, squeeze some of the air out, put it over the egg yolk and let go. Boom, and there you have it. And you can just transfer it over there. How easy was that? Now if you're thinking to yourself, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. All you have to do is pick it back up and put it back into place. So basically it went from 9,000 views to about 950,000 views in two days. So I thought, right, well I'm going to check my AdSense. So I checked that and oh, bada bing, bada boom. Thank you very much. My next two trips to Bali have been fully paid for. You beauty! <laughs> anyway guys, I hope that tip comes in nice and handy for you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time right here on Greg's Kitchen. Me, the guy who puts no effort, puts no time, hardly makes videos ever, doesn't respond to comments, doesn't do anything, bags other YouTubers, bags the shit out of them constantly because they're halfwits, and this guy here gets the viral video when they try their guts out. We can week out for years and years and never ever get that opportunity. <laughs> that it was the best part about that video going viral. Just knowing how many useless YouTubers that would have been so pissed off that I got that chance and they never did. <laughs> YouTube's slogan, Broadcast Yourself, has always encouraged people to be themselves on the tubes. Yet, with all the possibilities for fame and exposure on YT, there are still some that chose to remain anonymous. They are the masked tubers. And although you may not have seen them before, they have been on YouTube since the beginning. The mask is all about expressing yourself, whether people like it or not. It's about you taking control, that's right, control, of your persona and just revitalizing it with a character. I've got nothing against people who do wear masks. I personally don't wear a mask, obviously this is the real me and every time I make a video I is the real me. I'm not pretending to be a character or something. We're all individuals really just because we wear a mask doesn't mean that we are faceless people. There is a face beneath this mask, but it's not mine. This, on the outside, is an expression of my inner self. I created this. I manifested this. I have no problem with masked YouTubers. One of the things about being online is you can recreate yourself. And if that includes wearing a mask, that's cool. Maybe in your daily life you can't wear a mask, obviously, because of work and whatever, unless you're an entertainer of some sort. And YouTube, you can just let down your hair and let yourself go. And really open up people's minds with a creative kind of aspect. Putting on a mask doesn't mean that you're a bad guy or someone trying to do bad. Not all mass YouTubers are trolls. Some of them are the nicest people that you'll ever meet. I think everyone has a reason for wearing a mask, both on and off the internet. Masking allows them to say the things that they would not be able to say were their identities known. Smiley can do anything, that's, that's the point of Smiley. It could be a way of self-expression. For example, when I'm in one of my darker moods, 
I purge the apophist. And when in a lighter mood, the catalyst. It's almost doing a Star Trek or Star Wars um, video. They may wear a mask to make them look like Spock or Darth Vader. We say what you will not say. We will say what you want to say. We say the truth from our heart. I'd much rather see the person's face and facial expressions during a serious video blog. It's just a character I play. So what do you guys think? I do not approve of masked cubers. For we are the ones too afraid to say what we think while showing our face. It's part of how I feel. It's part of me customizing myself. And people, you know, trying to hate on the whole mask thing because it's not realistic. I do think that's kind of silly because at the end of the day, our world is full of imagination and imagination should never be restricted. No way, no way, man. One thing mask to us should never forget, however, is who they really are. And so, yes, the mask itself, uh, it's not a problem for me, because if they've got something to say and they're terrified to say it, but feel it needs to be said, they're, they're running quite the risk even behind the mask because they do have a channel. Someone can chase and trace enough to find out who that channel belongs to. But I appreciate them taking the time to share with me. Don't forget, you're not a troll just because you're wearing a mask on YouTube. There are a lot of trolls on YouTube that don't wear masks and just show you their face straight off the bat. There are a lot of cowards here on YouTube and on the internet that hide their faces just to say a lot of slander, shit, and to try and screw with people. But, um, you know, those guys give the rest of us a real bad name. As the interest for YouTube has continued to grow, so has the awareness of online safety, cyberbullying, and trolls. But who were these trolls? Were they cyberbullies? And how did they affect the YouTube communities? There are trolls on here that genuinely affect people. Um, they, they, they attack people because of their looks, and they attack people because of their beliefs, and they uh, attack people for no valid reason. And, there are a lot of people on here that genuinely get hurt by that. I've heard people say block and delete. You can block their channel and delete their comment. But they can just start a new channel under a new name and anyone can have any number of unlimited channels. Sometimes they're just happy to be acknowledged. I think they're just seeking attention a lot of the time. Most trolls generally are using what's called a soccer account, which is an account designed for nothing but trollish activities. Even the big YouTubers, people like with a million subs and up, have trolls. They feed on you, they have no lives, so they want to take over yours. Ooh, the trolls! I'm telling you, troll me over. It's another form of bullying. Uh, we don't tolerate it off the tube, so why should we tolerate it on here? They don't even have the to show their face. Most of the time it can be distasteful. Because uh, they're really abusive, they yell tons of crap at you. It's like the Wizard of Oz. It's just some loser behind a curtain. There's no wizard. There's just a troll. Troll the lolling at your expense. When these stupid trolls leave their comments or give a thumbs down on a video, they're actually helping to promote that video or channel. So it's such a backwards mentality that trolls have. It's like they work twice as hard to destroy their own efforts. And that's a sign of mental illness if I ever saw one. It's uh, something wrong with, with them in the head, you know? The troll is a, is a view. And I would like to have 50,000 trolls a day. How about you, neighbor?
I'd like to have 100,000 trolls a day view my video. <laughs> Let them say whatever they want, whatever four-letter words they like. Not a lot of people know this, but this is something which used to be used in the old days to keep trolls secure. They used to chain the troll to this pretty immovable object and keep them next to the canals. We all have troll tendencies. I think, um, depending on our mood, I used to be a master troll, folks, but uh, don't do that much anymore. If you don't feed them, they, they sort of die. And, uh, and then they decompose. I try not to give attention to these people. In fact, I've never really had a confrontation with a troll at all, you know? But for those who do the trolling, bless your hearts. Uh, keep on doing it. If it makes you feel good, that's what YouTube's out there for. It's for you too. Find those things that you just really want to get in there and stir the, stir the pot. Because of people on YouTube making videos speaking out against trolling and bullying, it has forced the media and the world to finally admit that it's a huge problem in our society, which I think is very much needed, and it's been long overdue. What I really hate more than trolls or haters, Just bloody experts. Why? Why have you all stopped trolling me? I still wear crappy shirts in my videos. I still, like, annoy everyone. But all of a sudden, I'm not getting trolled anymore. Like, why hasn't anyone told me to go kill myself lately? I don't understand. I used to have to block about, I don't know, six people a day. And I haven't had to block anybody lately. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or am I doing something right? I don't know. Why have all you trolls left me? 2007 also saw the first major YouTube gatherings take place across America. Soon YouTube gatherings would be held all over the world, and often with YouTube backing and support. YouTube gatherings see YouTubers gather in public to socialize, cross-promote, and share their creative ideas. The biggest annual YouTube gathering is VidCon, the creation of YouTube's vlog brothers Tom and Hank Green. The three-day convention features breakout sessions from popular YouTubers, as well as live performances from YouTube's talent, and an expo hall for showcasing corporate ventures and networks. By 2008, YouTube had over 250 million users and accounted for over 40% of all online video. Despite this success, Chen, YouTube's co-founder, would step down from his position and leave YouTube. However, he would take a technical job working for Google. By 2009, YouTube's presence and influence was now part of most people's daily life, work and education. Yet some YouTubers were not only browsing, they had become hooked. Although debatable, this was not always a good thing, especially for those that had become totally addicted to the tubes. My name is Albie, and I am addicted to YouTube. Well, for some time I was totally addicted to YouTube. I must confess, I am a YouTube addict. Yeah, I have quite an addiction to YouTube. I've been addicted to YouTube for oh, at least two years. <laughs> so you can't get an addiction to YouTube. You can be on it all day and all night and just want to see what everybody's doing. I'd say I'm addicted. There's quite a few people on here that are on there all the time, so I'd say they're addicted as well. I'm so addicted. <laughs> yes, I am a YouTube addict. Now, I'm definitely addicted to YouTube. I love being able to find new YouTubers, find new videos. I'm always constantly checking on YouTube. And uh, you know, even when I'm, I'm out and about, I'm looking on my phone on YouTube.
I do find myself checking in on YouTube every day. I would spend 14 hours a day on YouTube at times to the point where I was falling asleep, would fall off my chair and get hurt. You know, and I would get up in the middle of, of a meal and go check on my video, whether it was rendering, whether it was uploading. It just sort of sucks you in and you just constantly get out of it. When you find a video you like, there's always the related section, but then you end up clicking on a video on there, and then you click on another video, and then another video, and another, and another. And I think I was one more, and I have one more went. And then all of a sudden, it's like one o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, shit. And <laughs> I'm like, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I then had to rush to get to bed then. I'm addicted. Oh, am I addicted. But I don't see it as a bad thing. And you could be on YouTube for hours on end, you know, just endlessly watching videos. Take me, for example. I'm on the internet all times of the day. Morning, noon, night, late morning. I spend nearly 24 hours a day. Living, breathing YouTube. I can read comments on my phone reading, you know. Is there a cure for it? I don't know. Can I wean myself off using Facebook? No. Now I usually come on for a week and go off for a week or two. And it's better that way. I am trying to cut back. I have a problem, but I'm not looking for a cure. <laughs> I think it's a good addiction. You know, TV can be a bad addiction. You know, there's so much fake reality TV out there and I think that YouTube is actually about the most reality you can get on some things. too much of other people's game videos because really I don't find them all that interesting. I'll check out a video demonstrating gameplay when I'm curious. You know, like kind of how I want gamers to look at you know, my videos. In 2010, Hurley, YouTube's last remaining co-founder, stepped down from his position as chief executive officer but remained an advisor for the organization. Then in 2011, YouTube had received over 1 trillion views and mobile views to the site had tripled in number. But it would be the cats of YouTube that would find their way into more homes than anyone else. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, animals on YouTube, it's all about dramatic looking hamsters and kittens playing the piano. Any demonic cat, <laughs> any cat that's all possessed and like... There's just so many cat videos on YouTube and uh, a lot of people think that you know, that's all YouTube is about. It's a well-known fact that cats rule the internet from their evil purry empire. Sometimes I drag my cat and my dog into the, to the room and say, look, look at this. Well, why can't you do that? I think really YouTube should have two distinct modes. When you log in, you should be able to choose either cat mode or no cat mode. By the start of 2012, a new breed of video giants was coming out of the woodwork in force. These would be known as the networks, and their role in revenue management and cross-platform promotion would set the standard for commercial practice across the board. 2012 also saw new features added to the site, allowing all tubers to live stream from their channels, upload their videos for future release dates, and among other things, choose their own video thumbnails, once a feature only available to YouTube partners. Views to YouTube had now reached 4 billion a day, and the site accounted for over 60% of all online video. By mid-2012, YouTube had announced a class system for achievement. YouTubers who had passed 1 million subscribers were to be awarded a framed gold play button in honor of their achievement. 
By 2013, YouTube was available on over 400 million devices, with over 72 hours of video being uploaded to the site every minute. With over 800 million unique users visiting the site every month, YouTube's future will only see these statistics increase because YouTube has continually grown and expanded as we have. Because this was about us, we were the content creators. YouTube was young and old, this was our tube, and the future was whatever we uploaded. Really, honestly, let's just be real here for a second. The future of YouTube is sitting before you. This this beautiful 
delicious man that that is talking to you at this point in time, def I'm definitely the future of YouTube. That was a lot of smoke. 